Namaste. Welcome to the course on Yoga and Positive Psychology for Managing Career and Life. In this session, I am going to introduce this course. Introduce in terms of uh, what is the meaning of Yoga and Positive Psychology, what is the need of both of these, how both of these can be combined, what will be the uh, course objective, uh, why this course has to be offered and why this can be useful to all of you. And I will also share about the genesis of this course. It is started about eight or nine years ago in the School of Management in IIT Bombay. And uh, since then, this course has evolved and it has reached to this stage where it is being offered on NPTEL and uh, on the Swayam Prabha platform. So, I am going to share all of these things uh, in this session. This course could be termed as uh, engineering career in life. This could also be termed as uh, art of managing career and life and uh, it can it could be termed as science of managing life and career. So, it could have uh, termed in, uh, in different ways depending on uh, who is the faculty member, who is the teacher uh, and what is the background of that teacher uh, who offers this course. Many of you might have noticed that I am in the school of management. So, I am calling it uh, managing career in life and uh, had this course and I believe that my colleague uh, and I teach in the uh, technology university, lot of engineers and scientists uh, in the natural sciences and the technological fields, they work here and many of them could have offered this course and they could have very well termed this as engineering of life or engineering of career, they could have termed as art of managing a career in life, etc. So, uh, essentially managing, the word managing comes uh, from my background, but the core, the pillars of this course, which are uh, yoga and positive psychology, they are going to remain the same. Positive psychology, we are going to refer because that is a uh, emerging field emerging in the sense that the major thrust to this area came uh, about 20 years ago. Not that positivity and positiveness in psychology was not there, but systematic studies, more empirical studies, conscious effort in theory building, all that, uh, all that started about 20 years ago. So, uh, we are keeping this, but we are also looking at the broad perspective of Indian psychology. I am going to explain the Indian psychology and different concepts arising from there in the due course, but for time being we can understand that Indian tradition, Indian culture has also reflected like most of the cultures in the world have systematically reflected upon how to lead a good life, how to attain happiness, how to attain success in life, what can be called success in life how a good life looks like, all these fundamental questions were systematically thoroughly analyzed and thought through. So, a lot of concepts arise from this kind of thinking and this uh, and the text and the scholarly material being produced in the process. Now, I am going to start our discussion with few stories. Uh, first story for the session is of the co-founder of uh, WeWork, the very famous company. Uh, many of you might have seen WeWork workplaces in your cities. They are uh, shared workplaces and uh, some prime properties are being acquired by this company in many cities across the world. The founder of this company, Adam Newman, he almost acquired like a cult status. Company was valued at 50 billion dollar pre IPO. But as we know that uh, in the IPO, in the process of bringing IPO, a systematic auditing is done, the prospectus is produced systematically, 
and in that process uh, more thorough and rigorous analysis about the value of the company, uh, potential of the business model, success of the business model all that is analyzed. And uh, in the while drafting the prospect the value as evaluated by the prospect writers, the auditors uh, was turned out to be 9 billion dollar. That was a major shock because that was a revelation in a sense that the value of this company was highly inflated. If we look at this kind of inflated evaluation being done about this company, one pointer straight away goes to the co-founder Adam Newman. So, if we look at the reasons of this kind of inflated valuation earlier, one pointer certainly straight away goes to the co-founder of this company and it is discussed in the media very widely and some of the very well informed reporters also uh, stated their analysis in terms of the whims and fancies of the Adam Newman as the major cause of this inflated value and the uh, devaluation and crashing down of the value. One of the example is certainly shocking for any person who has some understanding about business and how the business organizations are to be run. He charged uh, 185 million dollars as consulting amount from his own company. Current status is that company is still making losses uh, to the range of 2 billion per fiscal year and as it happens uh, thanks to the media, thanks to the social media, success and failure both get magnified in the current times. So, Wall Street Journal reports that Newman had the inspiration to live forever, to become world's uh, first uh, trillionaire, expand WeWork to planet Mars, become Israel's Prime Minister, become President of the world. Basically, uh, most of his endeavors were directed towards building his own brand, he becoming more and more powerful and lot of these things are reflections of narcissistic attitude, deep and probably perverted self love and not looking at the other variables at all which have to be considered while running a business organization. I come to the second story of the session. The second story or case study is uh, of Sachin Bansal. Sachin Bansal is the co-founder of Flipkart with the Bini Bansal we all know. We all are rather proud of this duo who has started uh, our Desi Amazon in 2007 by started selling books online uh, in India. In 2009 their company was declared by the business today as one of the most promising startup company. In 2010 they were given the, uh, the entrepreneur of the year award by Ernst & Young consulting organization. They are very successful duo. Flipkart is a very successful company. At this moment when we are recording this session, the valuation of this company is more than 35 billion dollars. In 2006, till 2006, uh, Sachin Bansal was the CEO of the company. In 2016-17, the talks about this company, the stake being sold to the Walmart that happened. This uh, this transfer of the ownership happened very successfully. Sachin Bansal sold his shares, he uh, left his CEO position even before that and uh, kind of retired from this company. He took time off, he thought about new company but at the same time he also worked on his own personal well-being. In this duration he lost about 25 kgs of his weight and uh, he looks to be much more healthier and fitter uh, in comparison to what he used to look like few years ago. 
he set up a company called navi which is aspiring to be a universal digital bank of the india it is still um, it is operating on many financial products it is only 3 years of its existence the navi is in the, in the fourth year and within this time frame only uh, this company became profitable and sachin bansal says that daily meditation and yoga has been his chief de-stressing activities so these two stories tell about how someone can deal with the business success these two stories tell about how a person can approach life and career in altogether different way and what is the basis on which uh, these stories are or these stories can be compared the basis is that both of these events both uh, of the lives were managed or both the careers were managed by the individual himself there were not any regulatory pressure political pressure or economic pressure behind what they did for themselves and for their company that was their choice uh so these stories tell that we can manage our life and we can manage our career and we can actually mismanage our career and life as well major thrust to the field of positive psychology came with the special issue of american psychologist uh, in 2001 and in the introductory article of uh, the american psychologist uh issue where uh, uh, 12 articles on the positive psychology were published uh, authors uh, martin seligman and uh, chick and mihai they share also uh, two incidences or stories we can say one story is shared by seligman about his daughter and the story goes that uh, daughter was very young apparently 5 6 years old and there was a conversation between his daughter and himself daughter said that till the time i was 3 i was more of a whining child uh, on the birthday of on the third birthday i decided to be to whine less to complain about things much lesser and when i am 5 year old today i am no longer a whiner and then she directs the conversation to his father uh, professor seligman that if i can stop whining you can also stop to be a grouch and martin uh, seligman says that that was a very eye opening conversation uh, because no one said nikki the daughter to reflect and to set the direction of her life towards more positive attribute but she did that and not only she did that she was able to inspire the, her her father another story is shared by uh, uh, chikan mihai chikan mihai i can share few seconds about him mihail chikan mihai is a great psychologist of our time uh, we lost him about few months ago i'm recording this session in in february 2022 2 months ago uh, he passed away his most uh, popular work is in the field of flow flow is the feeling of being immersed and experiencing a kind of timelessness while engaged or rather intensely engaged in an activity so Seligman is most known for his concept of flow. Great psychologist. So these two were the co-authors of this uh, introductory paper. And here the uh, Chikan Mihai uh, shares the story about rather it's an observation about the uh, uh, war veterans of the World War Two. It was during the World War when he moved before the World War rather he moved to uh, USA from Europe because he was interested in psychology and uh, psychology was not taught as a major subject that time in 
in the European university or the place where he was and in America it was probably more well developed stream. So, he moved to USA and his observation is that post war after losing the social support many of the war veterans turned out to be desperate, hopeless and they lost the sense and direction and meaning and purpose in life. But there were few who were in the similar situation, but they retain their or they regain their purpose, they remain full spirited and they build their life altogether different way even without having that kind of social support which they were having or financial support which they were having at the war time. So, these four stories or caselets tell us that self-management is inherently our choice. Self-management can be done consciously. Most of the courses taught in our schools and colleges are about managing material, managing numbers, managing technology, managing uh, money or managing external things. Very rarely we create opportunities for a student to have a course about managing self. But if we look at who manages money, material, man and all the science and technology, all finance and production, it is human being. And what is that human being? The human being is special because of uh, his mind, because of his emotions. So, when we have all the courses of the world about managing exteriority, there are hardly courses on managing interiority. But the fact is that it is the interiority, it is the intrinsic state or inherent characteristics of human being which decide the quality of management they do of the money, material, people, uh, land, other resources, etc., etc. So, there is a need to have a systematic study on managing self and like we make it compulsory for kids to study maths or science, we need to think about making a course like managing self also a compulsory, a very important critical aspect rather in any educational setting. 